Hi guys and welcome to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're going to be reviewing the Sega Design X-Series Eye of Oris. So I received this watch for free. I don't have to send the watch back, but you guys know the deal by now. It's not going to sway my review one way or another. You're always going to get my honest review on this channel. And if by the end of this review, you want to check this thing out and purchase it, I'll be leaving a link down in the video description. That is a link to an Indiegogo. So this is currently on Indiegogo. They are fully funded. So this watch is happening. Um, so yeah, go there, check out the options. The watch price starts at 199 US dollars. I think there's only just a few available spots left at that 199. The next level up is 215 US dollars, so not too bad and you do get another strap, so that's nice to see. Uh, after that, I believe it's uh, like bundle deals, so you get two of these or three of these for a pretty good discount actually. So if you like this design and you want a couple colors, uh, that is another option for you. So the watch case is made of a bioceramic material. It has an obsidian crown, an obsidian, I'm not sure what this piece is called here, but it is another piece of, of obsidian. It has a mineral crystal with anti-reflective coating. It's got a push-pull crown, a screwed in case back, as you can see there. Uh, another display window here, I'm assuming that is also mineral, we'll test it later. Uh, and it has a 30 meter of claimed water resistance. The watch is powered by an automatic movement. It is a SIGA design customized movement. They call it the CD01. We'll talk about that movement in a little bit. And you guys know I don't really talk about the packaging on watches very much unless it's something very special, very something different. Um, and so, uh, yeah, this is something different again from Sigma Design. They always have really cool packaging. So you kind of have this booklet which is tucked in the sleeve here. Uh, you get your Eye of Oris, obviously. Uh, some gears there, really shiny, shiny uh, outer cover here. You have your Sigma Design X Series Eye of Oris. This kind of gives you some history into the eye. Uh, it's basically a sign of luck and strength and stuff like that. So uh, really kind of interesting. Uh, you open it up to the next page here and you got a little window seeing through to the watch itself. Um, you got a bunch of design awards that they've won here and kind of some just a little bit of history of, uh, of the SIGA design. Uh, you got your specifications right here. So it does have mineral glass and tells you some of the other stuff here. Automatic caliber CD01 developed by SIGA design. Um, 40 hours of power reserve, 21,000 beats per hour, 24 joules. Uh, but here is the uh, how, how the watch comes. So really interesting. Usually they have like a little a little tag that goes under the watch. So this thing is actually kind of tough to get out of here. Um, I'm going to speed this up here. So you just pull the watch out, pull the strap out, and put it together. So uh, really, again, really cool packaging from Sega Design. And then they got some, uh, they got the installation manual and instructions and all that stuff here on the, on the last page. Um, yeah, warranty card as well. So uh, yeah, really a nice set of packaging, 12-month warranty. Um, and then it kind of gives you the, the owner history over here. Um, yeah, really, really just a, a cool packaging from Sega Design as always. So like I mentioned, Sega has been around for quite a while now. This is, I believe, the third Sega Design that I've featured on the channel. They always bring something unique and interesting to the table. Again, they've won tons of awards. Their execution is usually very good uh, if you like this style of watch. They are definitely a, an acquired taste. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they put out some really, really interesting watches. And they usually do a pretty good job with it. So uh, I'm kind of curious to see how this one stacks up. Um, so far, it feels pretty good, but I say we get right into the full review. But before we do, do a quick wrist check today. Wearing a Precedus. This is something that's coming to the channel very soon. The release for this one is, I believe, December 5th. So uh, this one will be on the channel very soon before that, before or on December 5th. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. Really do like this watch, though. Nice. Right, so let's talk about the dimensions on this thing. So the total width on this thing, including the crown, is 49.2 millimeters. It is 12.4 millimeters thick. We have 22 millimeter lug width. And the overall length of this watch is 48.0 millimeters. And on the included strap, it weighs just 67 grams. So it is a pretty big and chunky watch. However, uh, it weighs next to nothing. The strap is extremely comfortable. Uh, I think the proportions on it are pretty good. It, it, I mean, again, it's, it's a big chunky watch. So if you like that, I think you're gonna like this watch. And um, you know, it's got a manageable lug to lug distance. It's a little bit wider across the face, but that's kind of typical for a, a square or squircle, I guess, watch. Um, so yeah, it does wear kind of how you would expect it to, kind of big and chunky and in your face, but uh, I do think it wears really nicely. So I'm gonna go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. And here we are on my seven and a half inch wrist. And as you can see, I can definitely pull it off. And I think people who 
individually larger watches will be able to pull it off. It has a pretty compact lug to lug distance. So, um, I mean, it does wear pretty big just because it's a square or squircle uh, shape. But I think for the most part, it wears very nice. It's super lightweight with that bioceramic case and the rubber strap is absolutely amazing. We will talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so it's super, super comfortable on rest. I can barely even feel it here. Not overly thick or anything like that. And I think it actually looks pretty good. It's got plenty of anti-reflective coating as well. So uh, obviously skeleton watches are not really designed to tell the time, um, but you can tell the time pretty easily on this one. And uh, But yeah, I think it does look pretty darn good overall. What do you guys think of that? Now we definitely don't have any sunlight today. Uh, Florida has been a little bit of a stinker with its weather lately, but uh, yeah, so here it is out from underneath that tree and you can see pretty clearly a nice view of the movement and all the inner workings of it. I think it looks pretty cool on rest. Definitely a style that you have to love uh, to, to get behind, but I think if you do like this style of watch, uh, this is really not a bad one at all. I think it looks pretty good. All right, uh, I'm not going to worry about any straps today, uh, but I'm just going to go back inside and we'll get back to this review. All right, so let's talk about the case on this thing. So again, the case is a bioceramic material. It kind of has this texture all over the case there with little lines cut out. Those are like smooth, glossy finish on the on the lines and the cutouts. It's a really angular and kind of interesting case. They always do a very interesting case design on their watches. So um, it's no surprise that this is, is looking like this. It kind of looks like something from the future. You got your SIGA design branding down there at the bottom. I think it all looks pretty good. You know, most of the time, extra cutouts and stuff like that just don't work for me but with a watch like this it does kind of work here at the four corners here you do have screws i believe those are probably functional screws they do go all the way through i'm assuming to the case back there and that holds down the case back itself uh, the crown like i mentioned earlier is a obsidian so it's kind of a stone material it's very smooth it does have a kind of cool feel to it same with this over here it just has a kind of a a cool temperature uh as opposed to the the bioceramic which is always just kind of room temperature so uh, it does look really good it's nice and shiny kind of breaks up all the the black uh, but I, yeah i think it looks good you can also get this in three different colors where uh, these screws and the crown and this piece over here are either gold or silver so uh, just something to keep in mind flipping it over to the case back here you got a nice big mineral window here i'm assuming that's mineral we're going to test that here next uh, but a very simple case back everything is nice and smooth and like i mentioned it's just ultra light on the wrist it is flat obviously um, but uh, yeah i think it wears really nicely for how big it is it's super lightweight and that's what i really like about it if this was steel this would be a really big watch and i don't think i would like it as much as i do uh, so yeah being being that bio ceramic material uh, i think it's great Right, so let's talk about the crystal on this thing. First things first, we'll test it for sapphire. And as you can see there, it is mineral crystal. We'll test the back here as well. That is also mineral. So no real surprise there. They came right out in the specs and they said that it is a mineral crystal. It's a heat hardened mineral crystal. So I don't know what that means as far as the hardness goes. Obviously not as hard as sapphire, but you know, mineral crystal gets a bad rap, but it does have uh, its advantages over sapphire. For one, it is it's it's less reflective in nature in general. Uh, they did put some anti-reflective coating on this one, so it does keep the dial nice and clean. It's also more shatter resistant than sapphire crystal. So um, yeah, the only real negative is that if it does get scratched, you're kind of screwed and it's going to stay there, right? So, um, but yeah, I think in general, uh, mineral crystal does get a bad rap, but it's really not that bad, especially for a watch like this where you're probably not going to wear it every day. Um, yeah, it, mineral crystal is fine with me. And again, mineral crystal on the black on the back here, uh, completely flat. Both of them are. But yeah, I think uh, you know, perfectly acceptable for a watch like this. All right, so next up, let's talk about the dial on this thing, or I guess the lack of dial. Um, so it's really an interesting skeletonized dial there. You can obviously see right through the watch there. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Everyone I've shown this watch to, they say it, it's really cool. Uh, they also say that it's not too terrible to tell the time on this thing. So uh, how you do that, you have nice big white arrow hands here for your hours and minutes. And then you've got markings around the outside and this kind of minute ring here. Everything, again, it, for a watch like this, it's about as legible as you're going to find, I think. Um, I think they did a pretty good job with it. You got a really interesting X design here with some little raised textures and different finishing on it. It looks pretty cool. 
Um, so yeah, overall, I'm fairly satisfied with the, the dial or lack of dial on this thing. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, all these indices around the outside, they do have lumen in them. They are also polished there, so they do kind of pop when you catch them in the light, as you can see there. Um, again, everything is done pretty good. You have decent hand size on this thing. I think they could have extended the uh, the loom on these things, the white, as you can see here. Uh, it, that is loomed, as is this one here. Uh, they could have extended those down to towards the center a little bit more, but... Uh, it is what it is, and I don't think it's too bad to read this thing. You have your Eye of Horus there in the middle, kind of spinning around as your second hand there. Everything in there is also loom, that white there. So, um, yeah, plenty of loom on this watch. The loom, I'm going to pop up a loom shot right now. And the loom is pretty decent for a watch like this. It's not going to blow you away, um, but it's not completely terrible. It does uh, it does fade away after about an hour. So I don't suspect you're going you're gonna to be able to use this loom for very long. So just something to keep in mind. But getting back to the dial, you can see really kind of an interesting layout they have kind of you can see these these parts here i mean this is all just part of the movement holder basically it's just keeping the gears and the springs and everything in place uh, and i think it does look pretty good you can hear, see it from the back side here as well just a really interesting dial uh, lots and lots to talk about lots and lots to see hopefully this gives you a good idea of you know, kind of what it looks like and i will mention here you can see the main spring here it is fully wound at the moment uh, but when that does unwind and it's kind of running low on power you can actually tell and see that uh, it does you know it, it, it kind of spreads out in there so uh, it does have kind of a little bit of a power reserve which is kind of cool all right so let's talk about the movement so again the movement is a customized automatic movement i'm not sure what the base is of it i don't think it's a fully in-house movement but uh, you can see here it does say Sigma Design Customized Movement CD01 there on the rotor. Um, it's a bi-directional winding rotor, so you don't get rotor spinning around, which is nice. Um, it's 24 joules at 21,600 beats per hour. It hacks, it hand winds, it does everything you need it to do. Here's how mine has been running. It's been running okay. Sigma Design usually regulates their movements. Uh, this is one of the worst ones that I've had. Uh, but again, this is kind of a pre-production one, I think. So uh, I believe yours is going to be a little bit better. Even still, it's really not that bad. So um, yeah, I think the movement in this thing is fine. And the movement is operated, again, by this obsidian crown here at the 3 o'clock position. Pull it out to the first position. I do have time, I do have trouble from time to time pulling that out for some reason, uh, but usually it pops out fine. Uh, again, it hacks the movement, as you can see there, that, that balance wheel isn't going back and forth, and this is where you set your time. Uh, so there's no like ghost date or anything like that. Um, pushing it back in, everything starts up as it should. Uh, really no no complaints about it. You know, you can hand wind it here. I will say when I'm hand winding it, my thumb kind of catches on this little ridge right here. This little ridge right there. Um, so it doesn't feel great. But uh, uh, other than that, if I just kind of go off towards the end of it, it's, it's not an issue. But really kind of a, a loud winding mechanism, as you can hear. Um, the ticking itself, I had this on a desk in a very quiet room and I could actually hear it. So it is a little bit of a loud movement, but uh, that's mostly because of the case. It's bioceramic, so you're going to hear it a little bit more than you would if the case was uh, steel. But uh, for the most part, the movement is fine. It's, just, it's nothing special, um, but it's not anything bad either. All right, so let's talk about the strap on this thing. So the strap is really nice. Again, from SIGA, they always do really nice straps. So uh, in between the lugs, like I mentioned, it is 22 millimeters. It flares out to about 26 millimeters, and then it tapers down to 20 millimeters at the buckle. Uh, it's a, a really cool design, though, kind of smooth on the outside, and then you have this raised and textured uh, horizontal striping on the inside here. you got your Eye of Horus on the tongue side and SIGA design here on the buckle side. You've got one floating keeper, one kind of stationary keeper. You can move that around still. Um, and then the buckle itself it is SIGA Design branded there. It's round on the end here, which is kind of a cool touch. It's a, it's a really interesting buckle, very nicely done. Uh, I've got no issues with that. You got these little cutouts there. I think the design looks really good, and I think the strap itself is very, very nice. It's lightweight, it's flexible, it's smooth. It's just, just really, really comfortable on wrist. Um, yeah, quick release spring bars as well. So I am very happy, again, with the strap on this thing. Uh, these straps are really nice. I think Sega Design should start selling some of these straps because they're they're really, really cool straps. Um, I've got no issues with this one. I think it looks really, really good. So there you go, guys. That is the brand new Sega Design X Series Eye of Horus. Uh, it's a brand new release. It's on Indiegogo. Go get it while you can. Uh, I believe it's going to be up on their site once the Indiegogo is complete. But 
um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of pieces left, so go check them out. I know the price is going to go up once it gets onto their site, so get it while you can at a discount, $200. Uh, really interesting watch, bioceramic, uh, really nice strap, pretty cool dial and movement. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, a, it's just a really cool watch, guys. If you, if you like this style of watch, I don't, I'm not a fan of skeletonized watches, um, but I do kind of like this one. I wish it was smaller. If it was smaller, I think I would like it a little bit more. Uh, I, I, I have a preference for size over style every time. So if something's too big for me personally, I'm not going to like it. Uh, but yeah, I, I do, I do really like the design of this one. Again, I'm not a big fan of skeletonized watches, but this one is actually pretty cool. So uh, I think that's it for me. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Again, go check out that video. Go check out the link in the video description if you want to check this one out. Um, yeah, a couple different colors as well. So um, pretty cool. All right. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.